How's it going everyone? My name is Pete Kulitsky. I'm an engineer with Audio Dynamics and welcome to my office right here at the brand new Audio Dynamics facility. A sizable building with no shortage of office space, R&D areas, a 400 square foot woodworking facility, but most importantly, dedicated listening rooms, one of which we're actually in the process of setting up right now, a process which I've been documenting and will make the topic of this video. So without further ado, This is one of our listening rooms and this is a perfect example of a before we're also going to do an after once all the sound damping is in place but uh, the sound that you hear right now is coming from my field recorder and as you can uh, plainly hear this is a no-go so I'm going to do more or less the same sort of a video once we have uh, a little bit of acoustic tile on the walls, carpets, things like that. Should be quite interesting. All right, back at my home studio now, I'm going to analyze the audio from the field recorder from what I did at the listening room. Um, you'll notice these little partials here, that's my voice, and these three bits right here are my finger snaps. Now what makes that interesting is that it allows us to see exactly where the room rings. So I'll go ahead and play these for you. Yeah, and you can see the incident is probably as thin as a single pixel line and everything that follows, all this reverb, that's, pre that's pretty much the room. So you can see it, uh, it rings quite a bit between 1 and 2 kilohertz over here. Now this could very well just be the sonic signature of my snap, so what I'm thinking of doing is going back in there with one of these and playing some pink noise, that way it's at least consistent on the frequency axis and then we can analyze the time axis a little more accurately. So that will be next. Okay, back in the infamous reverb chamber. This time with a little bit more gear. I brought the active Samson monitor from my home studio. I got the trusty Zoom H4n. I know I used the Tascam last time, but this thing has XLRs, which allows me to use the Dayton IMM6, which will be a little more accurate. And what I'm going to do here is pair this with my phone. Yes, this is how you pair things. You don't use Bluetooth. And uh, we're going to play a little bit of pink noise. And hopefully this will give us a more accurate representation of how the room rings once the sound stops. I know some of you will ask yourself, is the microphone a little close to the speaker? Well, in this case, no, because in this case it won't matter because what we're concerned with is the sound after the speaker stops making sound. So let's go give it a quick go here. See, the silence, or not silence, the lack of silence after the speaker stops playing, that's what we're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and start recording now. Make sure my levels are good. Okay, that's fine. And like I said, what we're listening for is the decay as soon as the speaker stops producing the pink noise. And that's what we'll be looking at right back in spectral analysis in my home studio. So. Hopefully that's got it. All right, back in the home studio, I just transferred the sound file from the H4n and we're going to have a look at it right now. Where's my cursor? There's my cursor. <sighs> oh yeah, this is, this is way more descriptive. As you can see, these are the areas where I played the pink noise and what we're interested in is what happens as soon as the noise from the speaker stops playing. As you can see, on the spectral axis, it is far more consistent than a finger snap and so is the trailing reverb. So from here onward is what we're interested in. This is all the reverb. In fact, let me play it for you. I'm gonna go back here. Clean. Okay, so looks like most of our trail is, I'm not sure if you can see a scale here, roughly 
600 to 2.5 kilohertz and then you have another little bit here roughly 3.5 to 7 kilohertz so these are our problem areas and the nice thing about this test is that it's easily reproducible so once we get some carpet into the listening room we'll be able to run it again and compare the spectral sweeps hopefully we're able to take another little chunk out of uh, out of the upper region and then once we put the sound tile in take another chunk probably further down now the reason this is important is that different thicknesses of sound tiles will have different absorption rates like sound tile like this is probably good to around 1500 or like 1.5 1.2 kilohertz and if you want something that absorbs lower down you're going to need base traps you're going to need thicker tiles that have more surface area because that's essentially what absorbs acoustic energy but this is an excellent test or an excellent way to visualize what's actually happening and i'm thinking we'll be doing two or three more of this as we get stuff into the listening room to get it to get it to quiet down a little bit all right here we go with round three at the audio dynamics listening room now featuring Ta-da! Carpet. I know it doesn't sound like much, but if you think about it, this is nearly 400 square feet of highly acoustically reflective surface that is now acoustically opaque, for lack of a better word. So the bounce between the floor and the ceiling is dissipated, whereas the bounce between any parallel walls is still more or less there. Um, the equipment is exactly the same as last time. In fact, I won't even bother checking my levels. Let's just go right to recording and making some noise. Alright, so we're running comparisons now. So what I've done is pulled up a sample from the second take in the listening room before the carpet, that's right over here, and pasted next to it a sample from the third take with the carpet, so that's over here. The beautiful thing about this is the only difference between these two samples is the presence and the absence of carpet. So right here, if we look at the decay pattern, we have this sort of an uppercase letter B thing happening with the upper belly and the lower belly. Uh, if we look for this pattern over here, we notice that it's a lot less defined. Things just stop. In fact, let me play this for you. Beautiful. Another thing you'll notice, uh, you have these little harmonic distortions, these little lines happening here that don't appear over here. Now, right there, that tells us that when we added the carpet, a lot of the bounce back and forth between the floor and the ceiling that was exacerbating certain harmonics and nulling others is no longer there for the most part. Got some acoustic tile in. And just as with the first bit of footage from this room, the sound you're hearing now is being captured on my Tascam field recorder. What I'm going to do in post is play this footage with the original footage back to back. So... See, there's not even any sense commenting on the difference between these two. Should be pretty apparent. Now then, on to the pink noise tests, and as I go to get that set up, I'm going to show you a little bit of time-lapsed footage of these sound tiles being put up. Alright, same exact setup as the last three times, no preface required, so let's arm, record, and make some noise. Alright, so what I've lined up for this final comparison are these three samples. The first one depicts the room completely bare, the second one depicts the room plus carpet, and of course the third one depicts the room plus carpet plus acoustic tile. Visually, this more or less speaks for itself. Huge amount of reverb on the first one, slightly less reverb on the second one, and of course with the third one it looks like the sound just stops. Also, if you notice, the background is a little darker, which tells us that the room is just generally quieter. So let's go ahead and play through these. See, the sound just stops. I love it. So, yeah, it looks like the sound room is going to make for a good test bed for future videos. So, thank you guys for watching so far.